Over the course of a couple of decades, really, computers have gotten increasingly locked down. People don't want to have to buy an entire new computer just because their battery wore out. You know, it'd be like replacing your car because you got a flat tire. Broadly, the idea behind Framework is that we are actually trying to prove that it's possible to build consumer electronics in a healthier manner. We are here at our headquarters in San Francisco, and I'm going to show you where... Damn it, the door is locked. <laughs> Press the pins with another tool. And there we go. Wow, that looks so easy. <laughs> All right, from the top, I'm Narav Patel. I'm the founder and CEO of Framework. And we are here at our headquarters where the magic actually doesn't get made because we do all of our manufacturing in Taiwan. This is the Framework laptop. And you can see it's just a thin, light, high-performance aluminum notebook. We've designed it in a way that every part of it can be replaced by the end user, and it is incredibly repairable, customizable, upgradable. This was the norm, and over the course of a couple of decades, really, computers have gotten increasingly locked down and sealed up. People don't want to have to buy an entire new computer just because their battery wore out or they ran out of storage space or one of their ports is flaky or a key fell off of their keyboard. You know, it'd be like replacing your car because you got a flat tire. Broadly, the idea behind Framework is that we are actually trying to prove that it's possible to build consumer electronics in a healthier manner. Looking at the massive graveyard of attempts at new consumer hardware, it made me realize that actually the problem is not a product problem. It's almost never a product problem. The problem is usually some combination of audience and business model. So the problem in consumer electronics generally kind of maps back to the innovation diffusion curve, you know, going from the earliest adopters to the laggards. Laptops decades ago at this point have made their way through the entire diffusion curve from early adopters to late adopters, and laptops are all the way at the end of this curve. And so what we did instead is really thought through how can we build a physical hardware product that is applicable to a pretty broad range of audiences but for which there's a set of early adopter audiences that we can bootstrap off of incredibly efficiently. Let's go after the people who actually already understand the idea of a computer being modular and upgradable. People who are PC builders, who are tinkerers, who are enthusiasts, who are Linux users, but the industry to some extent had actually moved past them into a place that no longer reflected not only their needs, but actually realistically the needs of most consumers. People just got it. It clicked because they understood this idea of what a computer could be. You can design for these audiences and you can do your initial go-to-market for these audiences, but it's actually really quite important to make sure you're building a product that makes sense for more audiences beyond that. And this is sort of charting a path audience to audience with a single piece of hardware. Very quickly, we've been able to start to drive growth on SMB, on enterprise, basically going in through the IT managers who like from a consumer perspective are like in here, but the people they're supporting, the businesses they're supporting are like in this area. Okay, who are those next consumer audiences that we can get in front of? You might think about someone who's, let's say an environmentally conscious consumer. They buy Everline clothing, you know, fair trade coffee, Every purchase they make, some part of their brain is always, okay, what's the impact of this choice that I'm making? When it comes to electronics, they just don't have a lot of great options available to them. And so for them, we're able to deliver on value alignment, but the technical alignment isn't necessarily there. So for us, that means from a go-to-market perspective, we can take the hardware we've already built and then slowly over time, build the go-to-market credibility and the go-to-market path to get in front of them. In new category, brand new category, let's say like AR, VR, AI devices or things like that, when you're right at the beginning of that curve, it's a great place to be a hardware company. You know, you can iterate super fast, come up with new technologies, come up with new features and functionality, have products that are changing pretty massively every year. But then when you reach the end of that curve, when you fully saturated your audiences, you've reached maturity on your use cases, the features and functionality are baked in. It's actually a pretty bad place to be a business. You're no longer able to drive advancement and drive replacement of devices off of new technology and use cases because they've settled in. You've saturated the audiences. There's nobody left in the world who needs a laptop who doesn't have a laptop. And so what we're doing, instead of focusing on maximizing the number of new devices that we're selling, our focus is actually maximizing the size and health of the install base. The idea is that we actually want to align the incentives between what's good for us and what's good for our customers around product longevity. We want our products to last as long as possible and our customers want that too. Yes, yeah, so these are both of our products, Framework Laptop 13 and 16. The first thing that's really key here is that 
It just looks and feels like a normal computer. We knew that the audiences that we were targeting wouldn't take that as a trade-off. And within those constraints, we made it as repairable and as upgradable and as customizable as we could. And that starts right from the outside. So we did things like made all the ports on the system, these expansion cards that you choose when you're ordering the laptop, and then that you can replace at any point after that. You know, why carry around dongles and adapters? Let's just face the reality that everyone has a different set of devices they need to plug in and design the product around that. Obviously, just fun stuff like color customization is big. So the bezel is literally just magnet attached. You can pop it off and swap out the color. And again, like really driving home this point that this is not our product. You know, it's, it's your product. It's the customer's product. And you should be able to make it function the way you want it to and look the way you want it to, then you can just pop the input cover off, unplug the cable, and get inside. Also, one really deliberate thing here was designing this product in a way that, even if you've never been inside of a computer before, that you can follow a guide or watch a video and be able to navigate your way through replacing any part of this thing. Inside, everything's labeled, it's all single layer, everything's got QR codes on it, so you can actually just scan any of these modules and it takes you right into our marketplace where you can get replacement guides and replacement parts and upgrades and so on. The idea of longevity is not just that it's long lasting with the original customer, but that we can actually extend the life of the product by enabling reuse and resale. Like the main board, for example, actually functions as a standalone computer outside of this laptop. We've also seen community members do some just absolutely insane stuff like building gaming handhelds out of the main board. And so we want you to be able to just scan that QR code, press a button, list it for resale, and be able to find some other consumer in the world who's going to make use of that product. And then the second product that we actually just introduced and started shipping at the beginning of this year is the Framework Laptop 16. Obviously, it's a larger form factor aimed at a higher performance point. We've added a couple of additional module systems. The entire input deck is actually modular. If you're someone who is in spreadsheets all day, for example, you can take out the keyboard, slide it over to one side, and drop in a 10 key or a numpad. Or you know, if you're like me and you don't use a 10 key, you don't use a numpad, you can center the keyboard and then put in other modules to the left and the right. We've opened up these module ecosystems to third parties and community members and developers. As we continue to grow the size and health of that install base of people on framework laptops, it makes it more and more interesting for third-party developers to actually be able to get ROI building their own products. And so it's almost this app store mentality where the value and actually really the beauty of that ecosystem is not that Apple is building apps for the iPhone. It's that there are literally millions of developers creating apps for iPhones or Android. And we're trying to basically replicate that at hardware level, enabling third parties to be able to come in and build their own keyboards or input modules or expansion cards or even main boards. An almost unfair advantage that I have is that I've seen the start of consumer hardware before. So I was actually the first hardware engineer in the team at Oculus. We made just about every mistake that you could make. <laughs> People mistakes, team mistakes, hardware mistakes, supply chain mistakes. But the thing that actually stuck with me, the thing that I learned there that is the most important lesson that I carried over into framework was this idea of being incredibly efficient and incredibly iteration minded. This idea that even if you don't get it exactly right on the first go around, as long as you're structuring yourself, you're structuring your operations, your team, your actually your entire company culture around the idea of iterating fast, you can resolve problems extremely quickly and be able to expand your audiences quickly too. And so in Oculus, we actually shipped our first dev kit in six months, like literal physical consumer hardware in six months. Another year after that, we launched the second dev kit. A few months after that, we got acquired by Facebook. And then it took us three years to ship the next hardware. <laughs> I really carried that into framework right from the start. So we started in January, 2020. In July, 2021, we shipped our first consumer ready product. That idea of iteration speed and iteration mentality has been really, really key for us. And that's something that we're gonna continue to carry forward as we go. A big part of framework for me was actually proving that it's possible to build a successful consumer hardware business, demonstrating what I think are hopefully the right behaviors that a consumer business can follow to actually be able to thread that needle and chart a path to self-sufficiency and building a successful business. So one of the most classic mistakes in consumer hardware is basically trying to replicate Apple. You know, it's trying to take in everything in-house. It's controlling every aspect of every atom inside of the machine. They've got a giant bank account. They can afford to control every atom. 
if you are a consumer startup, you need to really only hire for the things that are absolutely essential inside of your company and find the right partners. Every one engineer we have in Framework, we have maybe three or four engineers and designers at companies that we partner with. Our manufacturing partners, they know how to make laptops. Like they make literally hundreds of different laptop models each year. And so for us, we don't have to go to a supplier and teach them how to build a laptop. We need to teach them how to build in a modular fashion. We need to teach them how to build in a way that's upgradable. And we're able to build something just insanely quickly, leveraging all of that existing expertise that they had combined with the expertise that we had and got a product out in 18 months. If you're at 500 people when you ship your first consumer hardware product, it's too late. Even if you happen to get it right, you happen to pick exactly the right product, you get the right audience, you ship it out in the world and there's interest, you've built such a massive bloated bureaucracy that you're not going to be able to iterate as quickly as you need to, to to chart that path through audiences and category to get to the place you need to be. Yeah, the next milestones for us are really expansion. And so we're doing a lot of deliberate work to go from those highly technical consumers, those enthusiasts, the tinkers, the DIYers, to the people who just need a laptop that works for them, something that's powerful, something that reflects their values, something that lasts longer for them, making sure that we have not just the physical hardware, but also the marketing and the go-to-market to make it make sense. Showing a picture of an exploded laptop with the parts all on a table is awesome for the enthusiasts. Like they look at that and they just get jazzed. But for someone who doesn't tinker with electronics for a hobby, when they see that, it's kind of a turnoff. And so for us, it's like, okay, how do we make sure that we can teach people that, yeah, you can figure out how to replace your battery when you need to, but not have an exploded laptop be the first thing they see. Having like a simple, streamlined, smooth machine that they're very familiar with be the first thing they see instead. We've proven that this model works. We've gotten pretty immense growth on this year over year. And so from here, it's also about expanding horizontally into additional product categories. And the wonderful thing about that, we do see the same problems everywhere. Almost every part of consumer electronics we look at, the same problems are repeating themselves. These locked down, almost disposable products that people are frustrated with. And we see that the brands out there, the incumbents, it's not in their interest to go out there and fix this. And so we see that as this massive opportunity for us as framework to actually reset the mentality in consumer electronics. When I first got introduced to Narav, I didn't know that Framework was only four years old. I felt like I'd been seeing their videos on the latest tech tips for the longest time. So to learn that they were four years old only and it started at the peak of the pandemic was insane to me. They've done so much so fast. And I think there are a ton of great lessons and practices to take from this episode. But first of all, I'm sorry for the quality of my camera and my voice. I am under the weather and my main camera is disposed at the moment. So, um, sorry. Narav's expertise and experience at Oculus, taking this hyper fast iteration idea and bringing that into framework and then founding the whole company around this framework of moving and channeling through an innovation curve from your earlier adopters to your main cohort to your laggards. It's such a simple idea, but I think Charles Munger or Warren Buffett once said that you should just take a simple idea and take it very seriously. And it's cool to see Narav taking that, not just to computers now, but eventually in the future, other consumer hardware. Again, Framework isn't just a laptop, it's an idea for how to build better, more sustainable, upgradable, and more consumer-focused hardware. I think this is one of those S3 episodes that you just have to watch if you're in the space of the thing it's about, in this case, consumer hardware. There's too many gems and too much expertise from employee number one of Oculus and now CEO and founder of Framework. Whew. Next week is episode 40. Um, I can't believe we made it this far. These episodes are flying by right now. Thank you all for the support and tolerating the small technical glitches that happen uh, in various episodes and shots due to the speed that I make the show at. I really appreciate your patience. Uh, things will get better soon. Don't worry. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. And as always, until next week, keep on building the future.